In this video, you're gonna learn how to recreate an analog studio in your door. And we're gonna go through the whole signal chain from microphone to mic preamp, and then coming into an analog desk, going through outboard equipment, and then even printing to tape. We're gonna recreate that whole chain so that you can have that warm analog sound inside your door where it's easy and cheap. So over to Chris Georgiou, he's a professional producer from here in the UK, who's gonna walk you through this entire process. Now, before we dive into the practical demonstrations, let's talk about why we actually want to do this in the first place. Why do we want to take these perfect digital recordings and actually make them a little more imperfect? And the magic word is saturation. So saturation does two things. It adds a little bit of subtle compression and it adds harmonics. So the compression is typically fast attack and fast release. So what that actually allows you to do is rein in the dynamic range to touch a little bit of those peaks and just make it easier to mix overall. So you don't have to go crazy with a ton of dynamics processing on each and every track because everything's all over the place. Secondly, we're getting those beautiful harmonics. So when we think about saturation, we think of warmth, we think of sheen, we think of a little fullness, and that is exactly what the harmonics are adding here. So we have a sine wave playing C, and let's actually bring up our EQ here. So we've got our fundamental here, and then we've got our overtones. Now, if we add saturation, let's listen and see what happens here. So I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna just drive this up and pay attention to what happens here. We can see all of our harmonics here. Before we had more of the fundamental and then as we drive this up we get a higher ratio of those harmonics to actually meet the fundamental frequency here so we have this and then we have this Unless you're doing this stylistically, more often than not, we're going to introduce a little bit more subtle harmonics here and a little bit more subtle drive on each of the tracks here. So let's talk a little bit about this particular plugin here. This is the J37 Tape Emulation, and this is by Arturia. This is a more recent addition to the effects collection. This is a emulation of the Studer J37 tape machine, which is a legendary piece of analog recording equipment that has played a pivotal role in shaping the sound of 20th century music and was famously used by the Beatles during the recording of their iconic 1967 album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Its rarity and influence continue to make it a sought after piece of gear in both vintage and modern music production. So let's take a moment to look at the two stages of saturation here. So we have premix stage, and this has a lot more levels of saturation, and then we have post mix. So let's look at our premix right now. So we have got the microphone and this just represents whatever we're recording. It can be vocals, it can be guitars, it can be drums, it doesn't matter. Then we are going into our preamp and this is what is going to amplify the gain coming in. Now any interface that you use is going to have some form of preamp there and we're going to favor analog emulations so that we can get closer to that beautiful analog studio sound. So we're going to run through our preamp first and foremost, and then you have two options. You can run through dynamics and tonal processing, which is the arrow going down. So that is compression and then EQ, and then we go into our mixing desk. So sometimes you're gonna to wanna to do that, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you may not need it. And now later on when we do our demonstration, you're gonna see how I may use some dynamics and tonal processing on some parts, and then I may simply just run straight into the mixing desk, which is our next guarantee here. This is our next thing that we are totally gonna to go through, which is the mixing desk, which is each individual track. So the faders that we can see on the mixing desk represents each track, and each one of our audio files is gonna run through those tracks right so we're going to have our kick and that's going to be on track one and that's going to add its layer of coloration and then we're going to have our snare then we're going to have our hats etc and then finally we're going to go to our tracking tape and that is the final stage of our pre-mix saturation so all of these are going to make up 
the premix stage. So let's move on to the second stage here, which is a lot simpler here. We've got our post mix stage. And this is when you send all of your produced, recorded, GUI analog tracks to your mix engineer or a mixer or yourself, if you have a fancy mixing desk or whatever, and you're going to run through the mixing desk and that is going to sum at the end all of our tracks. So it's called summing and that is essentially like your door. So at the end of your door, you have your stereo out, you have your mix bus and that has all of the sounds running through it. And then we can process all of those sounds together, the sound of your entire mix. And that is what we're going to emulate in the post mix stage. And then finally, we have tape emulation. We have our second stage of tape emulation, which is our master tape, which is different to our tracking tape. They're slightly built differently. They have slightly different characteristics. And you're going to use this to be the final stage when you've got your end mix and that's going to be printed to tape. But let's now have a listen to a track here. We've got some drums, we've got some guitars, some pianos, some pedal steels. This is a very rough volume balance. Nothing else has been done here. Let's see where we're at. So let's approach how we can actually do this. So we are fans of working in reverse because what this encourages you to do is have the end in mind approach. This means with every little thing that we're doing, every tweak we make, every decision that we're thinking about, we know that inevitably this is going to be a master. So we're gonna go to our stereo out. We're gonna go to our master tape, which is gonna be the first plugin in the chain here. And it's gonna be the last on our stereo out. So this is gonna be the last thing here. And let's turn all of these off. Let's just focus on our stereo out. And we're gonna use the legendary J37 here. And this has some different color modes here. So we've got dirtiest, we've got gritty, we've got warm, we've got pristine, and then we have modern, which actually gets rid of the high and low filters that tapes have naturally. And you may want to use that. For this instance, I'm not going to do that because I want this to be a very accurate representation of what a tape would do and how it would react to the audio. So all I'm gonna do here is play around with the drive. Sounds pretty good to me. I don't wanna drive it too much. So we have our master tape. Next, we have our analog summing. So for this, I'm going to use the Slate Virtual Mix Rack, and this is the virtual channel strip, the virtual mix bus. So this is exactly for what we're using it for. It's a summing emulation here. So again, I'm just driving this anywhere between kind of three and zero is a, is a good spot here. And I'm using this Brit 4KG, which is the SSL emulation, the 4KG series, which is an iconic mixing desk. And this is gonna add a polished sound to the entire recording. You have different options here, but that's what I'm gonna be using. So let's AB this. I'm just gonna gain match it with. Without. Already it's adding some warmth, it's gluing everything together, things feel a little bit more cohesive. So let's now talk about the next stage. So we have our end in mind. Now we're going to go from the global to a little bit more local. We're gonna go to our groups. So we're gonna go to our drum group, we're gonna go to our guitars, we're gonna add our summing here. We're gonna copy our virtual mix bus here. Let's solo our drums. I'm 
then I'm going to do the same here with guitars. Let's now talk about the final stage here, which is the individual tracks. So we're going to go through what we spoke about earlier. So to recap, we're now going to the pre-mix stage. We started off with our post-mix, then we did a little bit of our pre-mix stage where we have our group level here, where we're going through the summing on the mixing track for the groups. Now we're going to move into the pre-mix stage because we've gone in reverse. So we're going to start off with our kick. So our kick is going to go through a preamp, then compression, then EQ. Then we're going to hit our mixing desk. Then we're going to hit our tracking tape. Let's solo our kick. First off, let's start with our pre. So I'm going to use the pre-1973 and I've dialed this in here. It normally will start like this, but we're already hitting a healthy amount here. I'm just going to drive this a little bit more. Then we're going to use some compression. We've got a slower attack and a faster release to let the transient through so we can get a bit more punch, a bit more attack from it. Then we're using some EQ here. I've just done a high pass here up to 40 hertz and then I've boosted some of the low end at 100. And now we're using our SSL 4K E series here. Now this is actually by SSL. So with the Slate Virtual Mix Rack, we used an emulation of the SSL. This is actually by the company that makes these desks. So this is a very, very accurate representation here. And all I'm doing is running this through the, the track. So this is what would emulate each track on our mixing board. And then finally, we have our tracking tape here. And I've decided to put this on gritty. So let's listen to this without the emulation. So what's really interesting here is we're actually gaining a little bit of headroom. We were around minus seven. We're now at nearly minus nine. So we've gained two decibels of headroom here, but we have a kick that sounds a lot fuller, a lot punchier, a lot more defined. And this is exactly what these analog emulation plugins are going to do. Yes, we could simply just add a digital compressor, but that's not going to add the coloration that we're looking for. So each one of these adds its own signature saturation and coloration. That is exactly what we're going for here. We want things to sound a little warmer, a little more cohesive and a little more glued together. So in terms of the workflow process here, I would actually go through now and do each of these tracks. Now, the caveat being we don't have to add compression and EQ for every single track. What I don't want you to do is watch this video and just go, well, Chris did that. So I'm just going to copy and paste exactly what he did. And that is just not the case here. That's not what we want to do. We still want to be intentional. We still want to listen to our tracks and listen to our references and determine whether we actually need compression or not. Now I'm getting in the weeds. I wanted to get a little bit more punch, a little bit more attack from the kick. When I listen to my references, they have a little bit more of that kind of modern thump here. So let's look at the snare here. So I've gone through the same process with the snare. I've just dialed in the compression differently got a faster attack and a slightly more medium release to get a bit more body from the snare. For the rest of these, I've gone through the preamp, I've gone through the mixing board, and then I have gone through the tape. And that's it for everything else here. You can see it's all the same. So let's have a listen to our drums with and without.
So to my ears, they're a lot warmer, there's a lot more punch, they feel more cohesive and glued together, which is exactly what we want. When we turn that stuff off, it just feels a little thinner, a little weaker, and a little less impactful to me. And this is what these details are actually going to add here. And thinking with the end in mind, this is going to help us mix these because there's just less that we have to do. They already sound more cohesive. There's more headroom. There's a little more punch and definition without us having to go in and start making crazy moves. Now, you may be asking, looking at this, wow, there's just so many plugins on here. My computer's going to die. It's going to explode and I'm just not going to be able to work. And for some of you, this may be the case. And this is where you may decide to actually print each of these to audio. So you have the option here to draw a line in the sand and go, okay, my kick is now done. I'm emulating recording this through these expensive outboard analog preamps and running through these expensive mixing desks. This is my recording and now I can move into mixing. So it is totally up to you how you want to incorporate this into your workflow. You may wanna go through this process step by step. You may want to just take some of these ideas. You might just wanna add tape emulation to each of your tracks. You might just wanna add channel strip emulations to each of your tracks and have them running through and have them colored by the circuitry. It's totally up to you how you actually wanna do this, depending on your references, depending on the sound that you wanna go for. Now, with that being said, what I really want you to take away here is please don't go away and spend thousands of dollars on these plugins and hope that they are going to magically fix poor recordings, poor arrangements, poor production decisions. That's absolutely not going to happen. This is really the icing on the cake when you feel confident with the foundational concepts here. So first of all, we want to have a really good song. We're going to have really good compositional choices. Second of all, we want to have well-recorded tracks and well-arranged tracks. If we don't have those things in place, none of this stuff matters. And then secondly, when we move into the mixing phase, everything is volume. If you don't have a solid volume balance, you haven't trained your ears so that you can identify different frequencies, different tonal changes, dynamic changes, and spatial processing, spatial changes in your mixes, in your favorite productions, this stuff's meaningless because you're not actually gonna be able to hear what you're doing. You're not gonna be able to hear what your reference sounds like against your mixes, against your productions, and you're just gonna be stabbing in the dark. And that is really not a fun place to be. I've been there myself. So please just don't go away and just copy what I've done because you think that is gonna bring you a better mix. If the other stuff is in place, it's a lovely addition. It's a lovely nuance that you can play around with. I love nerding out around stuff like this, you know, being a little nerdy engineer and dialing into these little nuances here. But by no means is this going to take something that's crap and make it sound like a gold standard record. And finally, just know that you don't need to go and get each one of these individual plugins. Do a little bit of research. There are different emulation plugins that you can look up that may be closer to your budget range. Now, I am fortunate enough that I own way too many plugins and I love Arturia's emulations. I love Slate stuff and I love SSL. They are all phenomenal plugins that I always use in my arsenal, but you by no means have to go and fork out a fortune to go and get these all in one go. So slowly, slowly, you can build these into your arsenal and add these different colors to your palette. And with that, that is a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you found useful in the comments and what you're going to take away and apply to your own productions and mixes. And we will see you on the next one.